Hi everyone, um, I'd like to thank the organisers and Varian for inviting me to speak today. Um, I'm Siobhan Graham and I'm Head of Radiotherapy at a hospital in the UK um, outside of um, London and I'm a radiographer, radiation therapist by background. So we've heard a lot today about how the machines have advanced, how the software has advanced um, to produce really high quality plans for our patients that are accurate, that are delivered accurately, how we can use ethos to account for that patient anatomy change on a daily basis. But how can we actually get the information from the patient to know that the plans that we've produced are actually having that benefit? And this is where Noona comes in. So Noona is very in solution for patient reported outcomes that's um, delivered on an app that patients can download onto a smartphone or a tablet and you can get that information in a structured and standardised way. So again, going along with that efficiency and time saving in the clinic. Just my disclosures. As I said, I'm from a um, hospital outside of London, just within the... Um, the big M25, the Greater London area. We provide care for some of the most diverse um, boroughs outside of London and we have one of the busiest um, emergency departments in London. A little bit about oncology at our hospital. Um, we have um, three treatment machines, so an edge radio surgery system, the Halcyon system and the Ethos system. We were the first in the UK to have Halcyon, not that long after Penn State got theirs. Um, and we were the first in the UK to have Ethos as well. We have a superficial unit and, and a CT scanner. We treat about 1,300 new patients per year and we're fully paperless with the ARIA um, oncology system with Eclipse and the Ethos treatment planning systems. Um, we ha do have a chemotherapy unit right next door to us which has 26 chairs and six assessment beds. They see um, a similar number of patients that are split up between oncology and haematology patients. They use... Um, Medical um, Aria Medonc for their prescriptions, but they um, use Radonc for their appointments. And we do have some support services at our trust, um, which uh, you'll hear me talk about, um, which were pivotal to our journey in implementing Nuna. So, how did Nuna begin? Initially, we wanted to align it with when we implemented Ethos in 2020. Um, Ethos being a new technology, us being at the forefront of that new technology, how could we make sure that we were tracking patient outcomes? when implementing such an advanced technique. So we started set by setting up a um, working group and we not, didn't just include radiographers, we also wanted to um, involve our chemotherapy colleagues because we work quite closely to our chemotherapy colleagues. Because in the UK, um, it's clinical oncology, so it's not medical oncology and radiation oncology like is what in a, in a lot of other places in the world. Our um, radiation oncologists also do medical oncology and get called um, clinical oncologists. Um, we did have a few little bit of delays with information government requirements and also a little thing called the pandemic in 2020. Um, but this delay we used to workshop lots of pathways and we also meant that we could deliver Noona to um, presentations to our staff so really get them on board with the implementation. Um, when we initially heard of it, you, all, you hear of a new technology, you always think of the benefits and we, we really thought about the, the communication with patients, the earlier managing of their side effects and symptoms, how we could improve workflows in the department so clinical questions could be answered by the clinical staff but appointment questions could be answered by the admin staff um, and how could we work more collaboratively with, pa with patients and, and with um, the other teams in our um, department. So if a patient's had chemo beforehand, can we find out if a patient's had a rough time during their chemo and need a little bit of extra help on their radiotherapy journey? There's always challenges. You're always going to have those people in a team that go, oh, not another system to implement. So how do we get them on board? Will we have the staff to implement, Nuna? We implemented it in the pandemic. Did we have enough staff with those... You didn't know what staff you would have on a daily basis at the peaks of the pandemic. And would patients actually comply to it? Would they want to join up to the, to the system? Would they want it? It's for the patients. So it would be remiss of us not to include the patients when we were first implementing it. And as a hospital, we really engage patients in everything we do and we really value the patient's voice and we have what's called patient partners. So we gave talks on Noona to our patient partners and then have a, had a follow-up meeting with the Varian team as well so that they could ask questions so that we could make sure that how we are implementing it really would have value to that patient's treatment. Um, and we wanted to seek their feedback and see if we needed to change anything. 
So we actually started off by implementing it in chemotherapy because my colleague um, from chemo who um, implemented the system with me is a nurse prescriber, so runs her own chemotherapy um, clinics for um, colorectal patients with which have um, oral chemotherapy. So she um, piloted it with a few of her patients. She also did a bit of a time and motion study beforehand, so worked out how much time was being spent before the implementation of NUNA, and she's collecting the post-implementation data this year. Um, at, and it was at that point that as an MDT, we reviewed the messaging within the NUNA system. So anything that goes back out to the patients when they've put something in, we wanted to make sure it was structured across the whole department and made sense for both radiation oncology and chemotherapy um, and time motion study. <laughs> Um, and then, we, then it was in November 2021 that I implemented it for my radiotherapy patients. And we took a little bit of a different approach to chemotherapy where I rolled it out to all of my patients as a communication tool and also to be able to get their appointments. So I decided that at the point where a patient is referred for their course of radiotherapy and my admin team are booking them in for their CT scan, this is when we would introduce Nuna to the patient and ask them if they would like to have it. And at that point, we engage a status icon within ARIA and then that inter, um, engages the interface between the ARIA application and the Nuna application. Um, I created site-specific templates for um, most sites that we treat in our department. And then we also set up baseline questionnaires. So all of our CT appointments and all of our treatment appointments are interfaced across to the NUNA application. And this is what triggers the symptom questionnaires. So at CT, they get a baseline questionnaire. At first treatment and then on treatment reviews, they get treatment visits. And they also got COVID questionnaires at their CT and their first treatment. And as I said, it's integrated fully with um, ARIA, the ARIA system. So we were, as we, I said, we were paperless, so it could easily interface into the um, and integrate into our encounters that we use at each step of the patient pathway. Um, in March 2022, 20, so March of this year, we brought our acute oncology service on board. So there are patients that are our 24-hour emergency hotline. Um, and so they're the ones that will review the emergency cases. So if a patient responds to a questionnaire or puts an ad hoc symptom report into the system, the system automatically triages the cases as emergency, semi-emergency, urgent or non-urgent. And our acute oncology service have been looking at the um, emergency cases for us. We were also the first department in the UK and Europe to implement what's called the patient education module. So this meant that all of our patient information leaflets that we would normally hand to patients could be uploaded in electronic form into the back end of the system. And we also implement in uploaded some and linked some links to the Macmillan website. So Macmillan's a charity in the UK that offers information to cancer patients. We created scheduled message templates, so at the start of a patient's journey through Nuna, they'll get an, um, a, a message which has the electronic information sent to them. And this is structured and standardised, so this means that the communication that's going out to patients is the same no matter who sends them the information. And it means that they're getting the key information when they're registered. We were also able to um, upload URLs of information in other languages. So the demographics of our population, NUNA doesn't support in those languages, so we only have it in English. But we have a lot of uh, the Asian languages and the Eastern European languages. So what we were able to do is provide URL links to websites so that they could get their information in their language. My second part of my implementation happened um, in March of this year. So back when the pandemic first started, in the UK we were treating breast patients with 15 fractions, but everyone basically moved over to five fractions when the pandemic happened. What was happening was I was getting anecdotal evidence from my breast consultants that patients were having side effects at what would be their week three, their end of treatment, but they because they weren't seeing pay, um, caregivers in, within the radiation oncology department, they weren't necessarily getting the correct um, information on how to manage that side effect. So what I decided to do was use the ability for Nuna to be able to send a follow-up questionnaire off an appointment, but that appointment not be visible to the patient, to send them a follow-up questionnaire. Then we could review that questionnaire 
and see if the patient needed any um, additional support. We could contact them via the app or bring them up to the hospital if they needed to. Um, and I'm going to audit this um, data shortly. And it has provided beneficial in me um, getting support for a radiotherapy nurse in my department. So some statistics. So you probably I've told you how I've implemented it, but is it actually working? So the average age of patients is 63.4. Um, and I really do attribute the fact that we implemented it during an age where we all got used to having to use our smartphones in COVID. Um, and if, I know you can't see the numbers, but we actually have 133 patients between the ages of 70 and 79 and 54 patients over the age of 80. Um, so age isn't really a barrier. Um, this is just to show how we've really ramped up the, the um, sending of the scheduled um, Oh, sorry, that's a daily activation. So you can really see um, that we've really ramped up this year in um, getting onboarding patients. Um, this is the um, information that's being sent out to patients, so the um, education messages. And you can see we're progressively getting higher. Note that September is accumulative. So we're at the start of September, so that's why it's so low. <laughs> Um, it's really good you can get data off the system so the patients like any app you can um, patients can respond and say was the information given by the care provider actually beneficial and you can see it rates it out of five so we're doing pretty good 4.5 or over so I think that's pretty good for a new system some benefits that we've already seen um, I had a brain patient who was on um, concurrent chemotherapy um, reported some um, side effects related to their chemotherapy and I was able to refer that to the nurse specialist before they came for treatment and the nurse specialist was able to be in the department when they arrived for their radiotherapy um, treatment so the patient didn't have to wait around to see that the person that could help them. A patient was unwell overnight so they reported in on the system that they were going to be unwell, they wouldn't be able to make their 8am appointment. Again that means that patients don't have to be stressing overnight, they can write a message in on the app, um, have maybe then have a little bit less stress and then get some sleep and then know that we'll see that message when we come into clinic in the morning. Um, the appointments are all interfaced across into the system. So don't know what your guys' radiotherapy departments are like, but I'm constantly changing appointments by five minutes here, 10 minutes there to squeeze that additional emergency patient in. We're not having to tell patients that their time has changed. We've prefaced that with a message that says, your appointments are subject to change, so please check back on a regular basis. They're able to clarify appointments through the app, not just radiotherapy appointments, but other scan appointments. They don't have to do that phone tag around a hospital to try and find the right person to get their appointment. We can just get that message and then reply back to them or refer that on to the right person. The initial COVID screening was great because patients could reply, write in their information, how they're going, if they needed any support. And I also had a non-English speaking patient um, whose family member had access to the app and the family member wasn't able to come in for their treatment every day, but the patient was um, suffering from side effects. So I could write to that family member, give them the advice, and then that patient would get that when they were getting ho at home and then that would um, supported the patient through their radiotherapy journey. We've had some really positive patient feedback and it is a lot about how the pa um, patients find it a lot easier to contact the, de the department. Um, they like it because they can get their appointments in one place, it's at hand um, and it's quicker than sending letters. Post isn't that great in the UK at the moment. So just some future plans. Um, I'm hoping to integrate our um, clinical nurse specialists a lot more and really try and work on more advanced workflows and triaging when patients come into clinic. Chemotherapy have just started um, rolling it out to all of their patients as a um, communication tool for appointments um, and contacting their team. Um, and Nikki, my colleague, has also set up a virtual clinic. So um, some metastatic breast patients, she fully uses Noona um, virtually and will only phone the patient if they're um, really suffering from side effects or anything like that. So she'll send them a blood test, she'll send them a questionnaire, she'll review that. If everything's fine, she'll prescribe the treatment and the only time that the patient has to come into the hospital is to co um, collect their next course of chemotherapy. We're going to bring our haematology um, colleagues on board and I want to um, 
get my receptionist on board. So she's often the, the person that picks up the phone um, to the patients. They have a question. She sends an email. I'd rather do it all through this. And then if it's an appointment question, it can go to my admin team. If it's a clinical question, it can go to the clinical team. Um, and then we just need to work on the follow-up process. So when the um, patient finishes their course of active treatment, how we offboard them. We do have a support team in our department um, called Living With and Beyond Cancer. So we're just working out how we can get them on, um, involved because they support the patients following their treatment. But we're just deciding on which, what time to offboard them. So in summary, the um, implementation of NUNA has really brought the subgroups of haematology oncology in our department um, together and we've really enhanced our working relationships. It's helped us think of new ways of working and streamline pathways already in place. We're providing structured and standardised information to our patients. We have started the structured collection of patient reported outcomes and we're building on the paperless um, working in radiotherapy and mirroring that in chemotherapy. Um, and this is all with the overarching views to continue improving that patient's treatment journey. Thank you. So thank you to my team at BHIET and thank you to my varying team.